of, of the same era as the deer pants for the water. So the choir has come down to the steps and we hope that you will feel free to join us, obviously, anytime during the service because I love to hear people singing loudly, um, but we'd love for you to join us now.
Good morning and welcome to Trinity Anglican Church this morning as we celebrate National Indigenous Sunday. And so you will notice through our readings, our reflection in the sermon and in prayers today that we acknowledge of the past, the history with our Indigenous brothers and sisters. But also today we celebrate Father's Day. For many it is a day of celebration and joy. For others, it is a day of sorrow and sadness. Perhaps their father wasn't all that they hoped that they would be. Perhaps their relationship is fractured. Or perhaps for some, this is their first Father day, Father's Day without their father. So though we celebrate Father's Day, we also hold in prayer those for whom this day is causing some heartache and some pain. We give thanks to God for fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, step-in fathers, and all men who have offered themselves to be a role model to those who are without fathers. For those who have struggled to be a father, we hold them in prayer as well. We hold in prayer the children of those fathers who have joy and wonder and awe, but also heartache and sorrow. Gracious God, we hold in prayer throughout this service those who have offered themselves and answered the calling to be a parent, to be a father. Be with them this day, that they can be the fathers that you have created them to be. They can be a source of love and comfort, that they honor their spouse and they honor their children in a way that is worthy of you. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Amen. We acknowledge and give thanks for the land on which we find ourselves. Creator, you made all people of every land. It is our responsibility to give thanks and respect to those who first occupied this land we are upon. We give thanks to the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations of the Grand River and are within the territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples, the first people of this land. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We share in the collect for this National Indigenous Sunday. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. Please be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. 
He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of Philemon. I thank my God always when I mention you in my prayers, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the partnership of your faith may become effective as you comprehend all the good that we share in Christ. <clears throat> I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am more than bold enough in Christ to command you to do the right thing, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do as do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is only the Son, himself God, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of Christ.
Please pray with me and for me. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, in whose name we say, Amen. Please be seated. I made a mistake. Have you ever made a mistake? Have you ever made a mistake and wondered what you were to learn from that mistake? Well, in my life as a priest, when I make mistakes, I turn to God and (laughs) beg God's forgiveness, especially if it was offensive to God, and I assure God I will confess my mistake and take responsibility for it. Oh, the temptation is there. Isn't it there for us that when we goof up, well, we don't have to admit it, do we? If no no one knew, why bother saying anything? kind of sweep it under the carpet. If we make a mistake and we could maybe foist it onto someone else that they typed it up wrong, (laughs) except I couldn't do that because I typed it, so the mistake was mine, so I couldn't point to someone else and say, they did it. Instead, (laughs) instead, the mistake is mine and I take ownership of it. And I ask God as I took ownership of it, What do I make of this? And in my prayer and meditation on the scriptures for today, one of them being the wrong scripture that is assigned for today, National Indigenous Sunday, you have in your bulletin, and I left it there because I decided I wasn't going to redo the bulletins. I wasn't going through that process again, but instead I would own my mistake and I prayed God would help me with it. The mistake is you have in your bulletin, Philemon, chapter four, verses four to nine. If some of you read the email I sent out last night and you opened your Bible, you would discover there's no such thing as Philemon chapter four, verses four to nine. That's why I could say, oh, it was a typo. So what you have actually in the bulletin is from Philemon chapter 1, verses 4 to 9. And as I was conversing with God last night, it's like, but I've been working on this. And to go to the Philippians reading, well, I'm not ready for that. It's a beautiful reading, don't get me wrong. It's about being loving and kind and generous. But I've been focusing on Philemon because it was an important story in the life of Paul, the life of a slave, and the life of the owner of the slave. See, Paul was in prison. He was in prison for doing things that he did, which was to proclaim Jesus Christ. He was a threat to many, and so he's in prison. And there in prison, he meets a slave, a slave who is very, very fearful, fearful of what his owner will do to him for he had tried to escape his owner. But as he knew Paul, and as they conversed, this man, this slave, came into relationship with God, sought to better understand Jesus Christ, even though he was enslaved, or maybe just because he was enslaved. Paul got to know him and agreed that he would speak to the owner of this man and hoped to change his mind. So that's the letter to Philemon. Philemon is the man who owns the slave. And as we hear in Paul's letter, he says, for this reason, though I am more than bold enough in Christ to command you to do the right thing, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. Paul could have, as a leader in the church, commanded Philemon to be faithful. He had to release his slave, for there was no place to hold a slave in bondage, to take away the dignity of the human being. Certainly fell within the teachings of Jesus Christ. But Paul chose not to command Philemon, rather, 
just in a, as in his letter to the Philippians. He talked about love. Because you are to love your neighbor, because you are to love all people, I'm going to speak to you from a place of love, Philemon. And I pray you do the right thing. Set him free. Let him go. Don't punish him. On this day, this day where we acknowledge the experience of the indigenous people of this nation, and we acknowledge our part as the Anglican Church of Canada in the lives of indigenous children, communities, families, and how we contributed to their suffering, how we enslaved them. It struck me, and I spoke to God about this as I am wont to do, and say, God, did I make this mistake because the Spirit moved me to really think about on this Indigenous Sunday, what is it we are commemorating? What is it we are remembering? What is it we are to do? And yes, we have the two commandments that have been given to us, and Jesus confirmed that we are to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. And the second commandment is like it, to love our neighbor as ourself. So we are to love our indigenous brothers and sisters, and as we look back through time, through the history and the experience of our indigenous brothers and sisters, I find it hard to believe that it was love that motivated people but rather a desire to hold power, to gain power, to force their ways upon a people who had their own ways, their own culture, their own communities, their own laws. And yes, they said they did it in the name of God to bring people to Christ. But I suspect that there were many people over the years, over the generations, not just indigenous people, but others who saw what was happening and said, this is wrong, and I appeal to you in the name of love. I appeal to you to do the right thing. Set these people free from the bondage that you have put them in and that we through the generations kept them in by maintaining systems that segregated that divided, that marginalized, that took away the dignity of their humanity. Let us do the right thing has been cried out for years. And we have done the right thing in dribs and drabs. But we still hear from our indigenous brothers and sisters there is more to do. But we hear in our own communities as well those who believe in God and Jesus Christ, there is more to do. If we are to fulfill our baptismal covenant, a promise that is made that we will respect the dignity of every human being, there is much to do. There is much to be celebrated. At the beginning of our service, we give thanks to the indigenous peoples who lived on this land before the settlers and before we, the descendants of those settlers, came to be in this place. They were stewards of the land and all that was on it. They believed in the Creator. They believed in caring for what was entrusted to them so that from generation to generation, the children would learn to value what had been entrusted to them. They had much to teach us, but instead our ancestors felt we knew better and we taught them our ways. If I hear Paul correctly in his letter to Philemon, we too today need to do everything we do on the basis of love. If we encounter in our communities in our church setting, anywhere, prejudice, marginalization, bias that still exists, and it does, it does. Let us do as Christ commanded. Let us speak up for justice. Let us do the right thing. Let us not be afraid. 
You see, I was afraid. I was embarrassed. I felt awkward. How could you, as a priest for 21 years, make such a mistake? It's so obvious when you look at it. But as I was preparing for today, I didn't catch it. Embarrassment could have caused me to hide, to brush it under the carpet, or my trust in God and Jesus Christ allows me and allows all who believe in him to confess our sins, to confess our mistakes, to take responsibility for them. Even the mistakes and sins of our ancestors and those who went before us. And when we do that, it is not to beat ourselves up, but it is to take up a new way of life, a way of life that better reflects Jesus Christ, a way of life that is about inclusiveness, a way of life that is about good news, a way of life that honors each human being created by God in the likeness of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. You see, we may think we know it all and that we have all the answers because we've gone to Sunday school and we come to Sunday worship and we take part in Bible studies. But what I've discovered, that is far from the truth. God brings people into our lives, I believe, and we make mistakes, I believe, so that we learn. So that we learn from those mistakes things of the past that should never have happened. We lament them, and we change our ways. Oh, I can't say I'll never make another typo or another mistake in a bulletin. I'm sure it will happen. I'm a mere mortal. I'm imperfect. Hard to believe as that may be. It's going to happen. But what I'm learning to do, and I pray you learn in your lives, that when we make mistakes, when we fall short of the glory of God, that we not live in a place of shame, guilt, beating ourselves up, but instead stand in the light of Jesus Christ and receive his forgiveness, allowing Christ to restore us and to take away any shame or guilt and bring us into that new way of life that honors each one of us is human. Each one of us makes mistakes. And if we create a society a society that seeks justice for everyone, a society that wants equality and love for everyone, no longer will we be afraid to admit our wrongdoing. Oh, I believe over the years when indigenous people suffered at the hands of those in power, I believe those in power knew what they were doing wasn't right. But I suspect for them, to save face, they kept going in the ways they had started. To hold on to power, they kept going in the ways they had begun. And only, only when there has been great pressure, great outcry, not from the indigenous people, for they have been crying for generations, but from the broader community whose voices joined in with the indigenous voices. And said no more. Take responsibility for what has happened. Don't sweep it under the carpet. Don't pretend as if nothing wrong was done. Instead, stand tall in the light that is Christ. Confess our sins, knowing that we are forgiven. And what I've learned from the indigenous people that I have spoken with, and I'm sure you have as well, deep in their culture, Deep in their belief is forgiveness. They long to forgive all that has gone in the past. But like all of us, when we forgive, not only do we seek to forgive what has happened, but we long for it to not happen again. For in those times, it's hard to forgive. When you see bias and prejudice, marginalization, exclusion, when you see that the population in prisons and jails is out of whack, 
there are more indigenous people than there are percentage of indigenous people in our nation who sit in our jails. We need to look at these truths, look at our systems, and acknowledge what works and what does not work. Not because we are commanded to, but because love compels us to do what is right in the name of Jesus Christ. On this day, this National Indigenous Sunday, let us beg the forgiveness of any part that each one of us has had that has brought about marginalization, bias, prejudice, anything that made an Indigenous person feel somehow less, not included, not welcome. Let us beg forgiveness of God for the things that we didn't do that we ought to have done to bring about justice. Let us overcome our embarrassment, our shame, our guilt, and standing in the light that is Christ, be his disciples and walk in faith in relationship with our indigenous brothers and sisters, listening to their stories, hearing of their spirituality, and discovering how much we are alike and celebrating the presence of God in our midst. Amen. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please center yourselves for prayer. Prayers today as we commemorate National Indigenous Peoples Day come from the Church of the Four Winds in Portland, Oregon. Creator and Redeemer, as we approach you in prayer, make us walk in beauty and balance. Make us open our hearts and minds. Make us speak the truth. We pray first for your community, the Church, the Body of Christ. We pray for all our relatives in the circle of life throughout all creation, for those chosen to be our leaders and teachers. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. We call upon the earth, our mother and home, with its beautiful depths, soaring heights, and deep waters, its vitality and abundance of life, and together we ask that it teach us and show us the way. We call upon the mountains and tundra, the high green valleys and prairies filled with wildflowers, the snows, the summits of intense silence, and we ask that they teach us and show us the way. We call upon the land which grows our food, the nurturing soil, the fertile fields, the abundant gardens and orchards, and we ask that they teach us and show us the way. We call upon the forests, the great trees reaching strongly to the sky with earth in their roots and the heavens in their branches, the fir and the pine, the cedar and the maple. We ask them to teach us and show us the way. We call upon the creatures of the fields and forests and the waters, our brothers and sisters, the wolves and deer, the eagle and bear, the great whales and the fish. We ask them to teach us and show us the way. We call upon all those who have lived on this earth, our ancestors and our friends, who dream the best for future generations and upon whose lives our lives are built. And with thanksgiving, 
we call upon each, we call upon them to teach us and show us the way. We pray for those in our parish family and beyond who have asked for prayer and for others known to us. Lynn, Beth, Liz, Sue, Russ, Amy, Madison, Griffin, Chloe, Heather, Bill, Cheryl, Jeff, Susan, June, Jill, Al, Sandra, Jillian, Sharon, Jacqueline, and other members of the family of Marion Carter, whose funeral took place this past Thursday. The flowers at the altar are given to the glory of God in loving memory of Janet and Ernest Lee and Carolyn and William Kilby, beloved parents of Edith and George Lee. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We continue to pray for all the nations around the globe that face unrest, war, famine, or persecution. For the people of Afghanistan, ruled by the Taliban. For Syria, for Yemen, where people are starving. For Ukraine and the unbelievable destruction of its cities and for all those affected by the invasion by Russia. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for indigenous communities as remains continue to be found at former residential schools, and for indigenous girls, women, and two-spirited persons who have gone missing or have been murdered. We pray for their families and communities who mourn them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, you made the world and declared it to be good. The beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass speaks to us. The summit of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythm of the waters speak to us. The faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dewdrops on the flowers speak to us. But above all, our heart soars, for you speak to us in Jesus the Christ, in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we have sinned, sinned against you in, in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Creator, you bless us with many good gifts returned to you from your creation. Feed us with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and he died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so we won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and our sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Sitting or kneeling, we continue to pray. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and his resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church now and forever. Amen.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
Let us pray. Great Creator, you have fed us with bread from heaven. Continue to renew us in your truth, to give light to our minds, strength to our bodies, and seal us with your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. We leave the bread and wine on the table as a reminder that we have invited God to be present with us in this morning's celebration of the Eucharist. We invited God to be present that we may be transformed more into the likeness of Jesus Christ, that we may walk in faith, that we may share love, and we may work together to bring about justice for all people. We leave the bread and wine on the table as we remember those with whom we broke bread and shared the cup who are no longer with us. We remember their faith and give thanks for it. We remember their love and give thanks for it. We remember them. We leave the bread and wine on the table as a reminder that the invitation to this banquet comes from God, God's self. It is an invitation to all who seek to have their hunger satisfied, their thirst quenched, to come to Christ. They are invited to this table. Let us do nothing to impede those who seek Christ, and instead assure them there is always room at God's table, and there is always sufficient to satisfy. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love and all whom you ought to love this day and evermore. Amen. And now we have some announcements. I'm going to let you read most of these that are in the bulletin. Uh, a couple of things. If you get your link, the newsletter, by, by um, mail normally or in print, they're at the back in the boxes there in alphabetical order. Please take it with you this morning. If you see one that belongs to a neighbor of yours, uh, please also take it with you so that we don't have to mail them because they cost $1.94 each to mail nowadays. Um, having said that, we're updating the email list in the office, so if you e find your email address is, has changed, please let Barb in the office know. That way we can send out things like uh, the bulletin and the link to you or other announcements we need, need to get you quickly. Uh, let me see what else. ACW is making a limited number of turkey pies again this coming Thursday. So they will be available um, on first come, well, not first come serve, first serve basis. Please let Marilyn Crump know. Her email is in the, or her phone number is in the um, bulletin this morning. Sorry? Yeah, I, I started to correct myself there. Yeah, sorry, yes. Please pre-order them. And actually, it might be a good idea to do it this morning because I know they're going quickly. And there's only a few left. So. Um, uh, yes, and then you can pick them up on Thursday the 23rd, just after we've made them between noon and 1 o'clock, or next Sunday after the services. And at the rate I'm going, I think I'll let you read the rest because I'm stumbling around. <laughs> Did you want to say something about Father's Day this morning? Again? Well, yes, actually, um, again, happy Father's Day to all the dads. And we are glad that you are with us, and we extend those wishes beyond our doors for all fathers today. Happy Father's Day. Now, after the service, on your way in, we invite you into the parish hall, or is it outside? It's in the parish hall. We are going to have lemonade hour, not coffee hour, and a time of fellowship. And as you head out, uh, dads, uh, gentlemen, please uh, receive a gift from the parish to you in honor of Father's Day.
My brothers and sisters, our worship has ended, but our work begins. Let us go from here in the power of the Holy Spirit to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. <laughs>